the Council of the Signs and a member of the Chamber's Small Business Executive Council. It's my honor today to introduce our Head of Economic Development, Patrick Coleman. The economic development plays a crucial role in enhancing the local quality of life in the city of Decatur. As a certified economic development officer, Patrick Coleman assists in the design, coordination, and implementation efforts to recruit and retain retail and restaurant establishments. Duties also include recruiting and retaining real estate developers that increase the residential housing opportunities in the city. Please welcome Patrick Coleman. every last detail that is with Ruby Tuesdays. So it can be something as simple as it takes about five minutes to really about three to four days to fill some of these other ones out. Uh, project wise, uh, we are very lucky to have this many projects. These are only the commercial projects. This does not include an in-house project or a development project. These are just real deals. And you can see that, you know, there's normally, I'd say between 60 and 90, but these projects don't get finished that year. I mean, sometimes we're lucky enough that you get somebody like Kyle May with Fleet Feet who comes in and then three months later he's open, but the Holiday Inn that's going on right now took seven years. So our pipeline, I'm trying to think if there's anything longer than that right now. I mean, the Midwest one port took about four years. So I mean, the pipeline can go forever. And whenever we're talking about the Wagner cleanup that Tim Dew were lucky enough to do, I mean, he had that idea, I'm not even sure how long ago. But it's just one of those things that, you know, they have this idea and we try to work it until we cross that finish line. So to say that our pipeline is full, it's very full. Because we might only have 
60 this year, but you're stacking it on top of everything else because what you're seeing in the groundbreaking, those are the ones that reach the finish line. The rest of them, they're still there. So we're trying to get them across. Project-wise, we need to the building permits. Building permits vary from year to year. These are also building permits that are only the commercial. This does not include residential. So luckily for me, I'm not the one who has to issue those because we have an entire team that goes out and has to do all the inspections, has to do all the, the permit process and go through the zoning. I mean, there's a big team that's involved with that as well. You're we looking at over 300 a year. Also in 2016 numbers, these do not include uh, December because we don't have that data in yet. Investment-wise, though, a lot of people I've seen on social media are bashing 2016. Like, I'm glad 2016 is over. Not me. If we can duplicate that, I mean, we're talking close to $71 million. Uh, we did cross that, Doug, and we're always joking, like, we're at 69, and we'd like to get over the threshold and get to 70, and we got to $71 million this year. That's fantastic. And some of these projects, like I said, this includes the Holiday Inn, which started seven years ago. So it's not like these projects come in right now and then we're just gonna be there and be done. There's a lot in the pipelines, but we had a really good year this year. And also, you know, thanks to the chamber and our EDC, we did a good job with the PR side. Because too many times, you'll drive around town, you'll see this building go up, and we don't really know what it is. And so people are always asking, you know, what's, what's that? Well, a good chance right now is probably a medical building. We're seeing a lot of doctor's offices go up. But <clears throat> trying to get the PR out there to let people know what's happening just generates more buzz and more inquiries and helps us tell our story. So, the pipeline, how do you get things in it? Um, a lot of people involved, more people that are listed up here. Uh, one of them is our EDC. Our EDC will go out and attend conferences. Their main focus is attracting the non-retail, all the big, good jobs. So when they're out there on the attraction side of things, going to a conference, trying to lure people back here, they can generate a lead. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce, I don't know how many times, it's even at a business breakfast like this, I've sat there and somebody comes up afterwards, hey, I've got an idea for something. Can I sit down sometime? Actually, just this morning, uh, somebody said, um, Mark had introduced me to, I've got, got your card in my pocket, but I've got a project. Okay, so th this is how this starts. Right in this room, as long as you guys know how to get in that pipeline, that's how the projects end up getting done. Um, the businesses themselves, so many cold calls. Just right off the bat, hey, I'm new to town, we're interested in doing A, B, or C, what's the best place to do this? Um, so the businesses do the bulk of the work. Um, council themselves have tons of ideas. They've set up their own individual meetings. We go out and meet with uh, whoever they're willing to follow up with. Um, city manager, he's not here and probably doesn't want me to say anything about it, but the whole law enforcement training center, he had so much to do with that that he'll never take credit for. That came right out of him, all of his connections. The developers, I mean, you look around this room, if you really want to do economic development, I could shut everybody else, else out. If I get our developers the tools that they need, they're going to take care of it for us. I mean, just they're, they're in here right now. They, they do economic development. We're the ones that are trying to make it as easy as possible and as business friendly as possible for them to do their job. The state also gives us lots of leads. Um, there was a time whenever it was really high. We got a lot of leads coming in. A lot of people interested in Illinois, and then it got a little bit slow. Uh, but now I can happy to say it's on the up again. I mean, it all comes down to consumer confidence and what the opinion of Illinois is. And the uncertainty right now for anyone who knows any political connections of not having the budget is not a good thing. We need to know, we need to have a plan. If we have a plan, it's much easier to sell Illinois. And then the public in general, just, just anybody, man on the street. Um, Chris Brodnicki just yesterday said, hey, I was over in Springfield. I had uh, lunch over at Freddy's. I think we could use a Freddy's. He went up and talked to the manager, got the contact for the guy who owns the franchise, and we'll set up a meeting later on. So it's, it's everybody. But when I say there's a hero, it's everyone in here. Anyone here can do economic development. It's just a matter of hopefully you're knowing who to get the leads to and work the project until we can get and see that creepy golden shovel logo I showed you. <laughs> now the other way to look at it has to flip it upside down, to talk about how it is in relationship to everything else. Because I think a lot of times whenever you say economic development, we just think about the jobs. And it is about the jobs, but that is the end point. In relation to other things, it's a part of, it's the very tip, the deal section of prospect development. Below prospect development is the finance side of things. That's the incentives themselves. There's all kinds of incentive projects that's going on. We really rely heavily on council for these incentives. Um, the development side of things is where we're talking about the zoning and different requirements that we have in engineering and planning. Now, the marketing and sales, that's where you're going to see uh, myself going out in order to uh, go to Vegas, luckily, <coughs> it's the biggest retail conference there is, to try to pull in more retail, and also the EDC going out to grab your non-retail. It's also internal marketing, like you see with the City Limitless campaign. So the marketing and sales side is right there. 
Now, in relation to everything else when it comes to economic development, you're at the very top. So whenever someone comes in and asks me to talk about economic development on how, what it needs to be for the entire community, we're just very, today, just covered the very tip of the, what's out there for economic development. Divided this up into 12 sections. Um, entrepreneurship, major factor when it comes to Milliken University. I mean, they're, they're huge on entrepreneurship. We cannot do economic development without them. Um, small business development and tech transfer. That's what the chamber does. Every business breakfast you guys go to or a lunch and learn, they're giving you the latest and greatest technology on how to expand your business. Um, FDI and exporting, that's the Midwest and Laporte. Business retention and expansion. Luckily for us, we have a huge collaboration going on right now between our EDC, Chamber of Commerce, Workforce Investment Solutions, Richland Community College, and Millican University, where we're going to have a team put together to go out and meet with every single business. Because when I talked earlier about that funnel and those meetings, those meetings are just our department. Now, if we can expand that funnel with this business retention expansion team, with the partnerships that we have, we can get more meetings, more inquiries, more projects, and more investment. So the goal is moving forward to actually multiply what you saw up there. Then we've got the brownfield cleanups. This is a big thing for me, being from Decatur, we're an old factory town, so we do have a lot of brownfields. Um, if we can duplicate exactly what Tim Buick did with Wagner castings, that's what needs to be done. If you look around, there are old laundromats. Unfortunately, some of that land's contaminated. Luckily though, the EPA and the IEPA has funds that we can help assist clean those up. If we can clean up our own backyard, it'll be easier to attract new business into our towns or help local businesses expand. Neighborhood development is very huge. That's why we've got the downtown streetscape project going on and why we rely on our park district so heavily. The park districts play a major factor in quality of life and so do our neighborhoods. Um, workforce development. You cannot do economic development without the workforce. I mean, I'm, I'm glad that we have a lake. I'm glad that we have rail. But if you do not have workers, you're not attracting anybody. I mean, that's the number one scarce resource on every RFP that we have. They want to know about who we are, who are our workers. It all comes down to them. Then the baseline of that is infrastructure, which is what the city spends all day, all night doing. I mean, we're, that's what we do is infrastructure. So as you can see on the Econ Dev hierarchy, what we talked about today was just the very, very tip of the entire thing. Um, three ways that you guys can get involved, just right off the bat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pitch retail all day long, but with your wallets. I mean, we just had a record-breaking year for online sales, and I don't wanna ask anyone here to raise their hand if they bought anything online, because the numbers are staggering. I mean, and then right now, I'm not sure when you buy something online, where that money goes as far as the state of Illinois is concerned. I do know right now that if you buy something on Merchant Street, that goes right into their wallets and it goes right into the city of Decatur. If you're buying something from Alaska, you're paving their roads. Um, right now we're known as a tier two market. We need to break that model and we really need to focus on voting with our wallet and telling that story. When I talk about telling that story, it's uh, spreading the love. I mean, we've had, like I said, $71 million of investment in Decatur People need to know that. People need to hear that. There's too many times where, you know, you see something going on, it's like, oh, it's just Decatur. And it's like, it's not just Decatur. You know, I'm getting phone calls from other communities asking us how we're doing what we're doing. Um, the fiber project's one of them. How did you guys get that fiber bill? That's fantastic you guys figured that out. Uh, the Wagner cleanup, I'll keep going back to that one. Um, two new hotels, I mean, Milliken's big expansion. Airmark, I mean, there's so many projects going on, we need to share that. And one way that you can do that is with social media. If you guys see something that's on the Herald Review, or you know, on the radio or on TV, share it via social media. Let people know that there is development going on here. Because when development's going on here, it just leads to more development. Also want to throw this in here about development. We did get a project in, and so 2017 pipeline's already looking good. You're already starting off at $8.7 million. Um, the building permit was filed for our law enforcement training center. So that's looking, another story that we can tell. Uh, the third thing, though, is just knowing to cater. And there's really not enough time to go over everything in economic development, but if you know the role of the players, just sit down and meet with them. They'll tell you exactly what all of us do. Um, knowing the economy, what's going on, which a lot of people do, but then the last one was something that we talked about. Why not just explain to everybody what is economic development? Luckily, the way that we set this up is that there's 12 of them. And because there is 12, it breaks down into a nice, neat course, so monthly we can have classes to go over every single one of them. Instead of a half an hour, actually going over an hour long, lunch and learn, to invite the public out to say, here's exactly how the brownfield process works. Here's exactly how we do business retention and expansion, or foreign direct investment. Um, so moving forward this year, we'll end up setting one of these up for this month, but being able to teach the public how it's done, because the more people that understand the game, the more that they're gonna 
be able to help out with the game itself. And the other thing is the roles of everybody. This does not include the investors. This does not include the developers. These are just the community partners that are out there. I mean, just Beautify Decatur Coalition, Business Center of Decatur, our Commission Visitors Bureau, the role that they play. I don't think anyone realizes what an impact they have on our economy. Uh, the Decatur Arts Council, when it comes to the murals, it's a huge quality of life issue. The Decatur Housing Authority, a park district. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce, Sanitary District, the EDC, the Illinois Century Network, um, IDOT themselves, the IEPA, EPA, Macon County, Milton University of Richland, and Workforce. Know these people. These are the people that are doing economic development. I know it's easy to see, here's your groundbreaking, hey Patrick, tell us what's going on, there's $71 million of investment. There is so many people that are working on all of this. Get to know all of them because that's really how economic development is done. That's a deal-making process all crammed really, really fast. Uh, that was the goal, so there could be plenty of questions afterwards. If you guys have any kind of follow-up questions, my number's up there, along with my email, and um, at this time I'll take questions. Restaurants are not that hard because we love to eat. <laughs> we have uh, we have data. We have so much data. It's kind of scary with the data that we have, but we know exactly where we eat, what kind of food we like. I say the harder part is whenever a restaurant has a certain model, getting them out of that model. So there is a reason that we have so many Mexican restaurants. Mexican restaurant sales are out the roof. And what they look at are the sales over the square footage. So if that number is very high, that's where they're going to go. A popular restaurant that is difficult right now is Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A's model, if you go anywhere else, they want to be by a mall. We don't have a mall. Well, unfortunately, it's right across the street. I keep trying to lure them in, but their model is they have an Excel spreadsheet. If you mark off all these check boxes, we will come to your town. Theirs requires a mall. So that, that becomes difficult. The other ones are not. We found it very easy, though, when it comes to franchises. So when it came to Sonic, Gary Haynes had, oh, I don't say this number wrong, there are 17 subways in our county. He does not own all of those. But the first thing was to say, Gary, no more subways. <laughs> <laughs> the subway is a great product, but that's too many subways. Is there anything else you're thinking about? He was always been kicking around the idea of a Sonic. Fantastic. Everybody in town wants Sonic. We used to have Elam's kind of blends together with the whole dry pop thing. Um, from there, that was pretty easy. It was just a matter of going out to Vegas, um, letting them know that, hey, you've got your location you're talking about has got so many soccer moms driving by it that you're going to be the place to go to right after a game. And sure enough, we got our Sonic. So it really depends on what their model is and what the restaurant is. But if you look at the restaurant sales compared to our demand, it's crazy. Like, we either do not cook at home whatsoever, or we've just got a lot of people driving in because, yeah, our rest restaurants are easy. Retail, on the other hand, is very scary right now. Like I said with the online process earlier, Amazon is just destroying people. They're setting up their own retail stores. I mean, they're changing the game. And the way the economy has gone, as far as the devaluation of the yen over in China, they can't afford our thing, so logistics is completely backwards. It used to be you walked in Target, their shelves were stocked. Their storeroom in the back was stocked full of things because they knew where the demand was. Now, if they don't have it, you just buy it on your phone right there and it's sent to your house. I'm not talking to our house. I'm talking about being in Booty, Illinois and having a gallon of milk delivered to your home. It's changed everything. So the retail game, especially with the election, everyone's trying to watch right now what's going on. And so eventually that's going to change once the business is all start coming back. But online has changed everything retail-wise, so that's been difficult. But restaurants, not at all. That's why, I mean, if you look at a lot of our projects, they're restaurant-based. Yes? You mentioned about being a tier two market and wanting to change the model. Yes. Are you wanting to make it a tier one, or you want to create a whole new model and make the present context to that? Sure. The, the tier two market concept is whenever I'm in Vegas, I'm saying, hey, you know, you guys just come to Decatur, Illinois. And they say, well, we're really looking at your market, but we track your credit card sales. So we know where you live compared to where you're shopped. So instead of opening up in Decatur, we'll open new stores in Bloomington and Champaign because you're going to drive, which means that we are tier two now. How do we change that? We preach buy local. I mean, it, it really does count down to shopping here in town. If you shop here, if you can't find it in Decatur, go buy it in Forsyth. Because if you can't get it in Forsyth, you go to Springfield, Springfield's going to get a new business. That's how it works. And so to break that model, we have to all come together and shop locally. If it's not locally, go out a little bit and then a little bit more before you go online. Because every time that we go online, you're just building somebody else's economy. And right now, you know, if you look at the mall, we're, we're losing business to the mall. We're, it's almost, we're cannibalizing each other. It's not the way that it should be. 
the easiest thing for me to do retail economic development is to fill that mall up. Because right now they're struggling finding somebody and they're dropping their rent lower than what ours is. So they can come in and say, hey, TJ Maxx, tired of paying $15 a square foot, what about eight? What about 10? And so they're, they're taking ours. And so whenever you look at another retailer and say, hey, Macy's, you want to come to Decatur? Well, I don't know, isn't your mall filling up with, I don't want to say the proper term, but stores, I mean, you're talking about Hobby Lobby, they're not, you know, you're not the, the bigger stores. So that makes, that's what I'm saying is a tier two, that's what we're labeled as. So to change that, we got to shop locally. And I know it's a chicken and the egg scenario because people say, well, how do I, you know, buy these products if you don't have the stores to supply them, especially when it comes to clothes or sporting goods. I mean, it's, it's a major issue, but we got to start somewhere. Construction trailer park right across from the Jerry Queen on the north side. There's a doctor's office there, Mona Say. Sure. There's a construction trailer park on the edge lot. You know what's going in there. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the hardest part about my job, <laughs> and the most important part about my job, is the trust factor. I mean, without the trust. You're not going. No one's going to talk to you. I mean, so I we as a city do not make any announcements. You know, our, our chamber knows. We're close with our EDC. There's a major trust factor as far as who knows what. But we let the developers tell that story. We let the businesses tell that story. And when they're ready to celebrate, we we break out the shovels. That's what we're here for. But it's not our job to let everybody else know what's going on in town. I'm sure eventually it kind of gets around when it comes to you know when the construction workers and everybody else can find out. But we keep it under wraps as long as possible. So until they're ready to announce what it is, um, like I said earlier, jokingly, if you look at most projects around town, good chance it's a doctor's office. <laughs> that seems to be what we're so far. But um, no, we, I can't really say until they're ready to say it. And when they are, hopefully everybody comes out to that groundbreaking, because that's really what makes our community great is that we're doing this and we're celebrating with them and telling the businesses thank you. you know, thank you for investing in Decatur. <coughs> Sorry, I wish I could tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's it. You guys have my number and you got my email. Um, anytime, hit me up for lunch, coffee, drinks afterwards, you know, and that's how we do business in the catering. Thanks.